In this video, we'll add an animated prop to our scene. We go to the Assets folder in the Content Browser to the Props Forklift folder, and there's an icon there for a forklift layer. Drag that layer into the Layer tab, and you can see the geometry for the forklift has been added to the scene. It's got some nice materials on there. Uh, it was m modeled in a 3D application. We just brought it into the existing scene, and now we're going to animate it inside of Maya before we add it to the scene in Create. So we're going to go to Maya and before you uh, start animating in Maya we want to make sure check the uh, connect the uh, connector is loaded in the Omniverse launcher you can see the Autodesk Maya connector is installed that allows you to get the Omniverse menu up in the top menu bar and that also gives you a shelf an Omniverse shelf that first icon there on the left you can sign into your Nucleus server as I've done there, the icon turns green that shows you have a good connection. We we'll use the open folder to get the layer that we just added to the create scene to add it into the Maya scene. So we can take a look at the geometry for the forklift and we can look at the shaders on it as well. So you can animate with the shaders that came from the import of the USD file. And now, because we want a background to animate against, we need to import and add a reference into the Maya scene. So we're going to create a reference and browse to the same assets folder of the project that has the environment of the warehouse in a previously saved Maya file. I created this background warehouse by importing the Omniverse warehouse layer and deleting all the assets I didn't need to lighten the scene. And then I saved it as a Maya file for use as a reference here. So we'll select the forklift anim node that's one below the forklift world node in the outliner there. And we'll rotate this around to uh, minus 90 degrees in the Z axis. And we'll just pick a position that we want the forklift to start animating. And we could just save, nor save normal keyframes for the motion, but what we'll do is use the, the CV curve tool to draw a curve for the path of the animation of the forklift. So I've just done that quickly here. You can go to component mode and modify all of the individual CVs on the curve so that you can smooth it out to get a nice curve uh, rotation around the uh, the path of the, or the, the, uh, the pillar that's in the middle of the path there. And so once you have finished creating the curve, you go select the hierarchy of the anim, the forklift anim node, and then shift select the curve and we'll attach the forklift to the curve. Using the animation tool set, we'll go to the motion paths menu, attach to motion path, and you've got the front axis and up axis set. We're gonna do it along the time slider time frame, which is 120 frames. We've got an extra rotation on an object, so you can use the, uh, the transform of the forklift below the, the one you attach to the curve to rotate it in minus 90 degrees on X. That's the stacked rotations added that extra transform there and just correct that rotation and now the forklift is animated along the path of the curve that we drew. You can change the timing of the animation by going to the window menu to get the animation editor of the graph editor. Here's the curve of the graph of the motion. We can see you could you could change the timing overall so that it happens quicker or faster, but you can also move the handles on the keyframe here at the last frame of just move the handles so that there's a nice ease in on the motion and then it stops abruptly at the end. So we play this back, you can see it starts slowly and then animates very uh, smoothly around the curve and then stops abruptly at the rack in the warehouse. So now we want to ex export this animation. We can do that in two ways. Here I've selected the entire hierarchy of the forklift and we're going to create a set. This set is really just a collection of objects in the scene. I'm going to name the set uh, forklift anim set and that way we'll be able to access that collection of uh, attributes in the scene that are stacked there to export. So we'll go back to the shelf, the Omniverse shelf, hit the export button. That brings up the export to USD dialog. We can set our animation uh, preferences or options to export. We've got an animation clip that we're going to export. Export either the selected items from the outliner or that newly created anim set that I made there. Be sure also to remove the world string from the default prim 
field because we've got a world node above the animated forklift so we don't want to add another stacked uh, uh, hierarchy there so simply name the output of the animation that you are going to create we've got forklift anim 001 for this and we hit the export button and all of the curves for all of the objects in the selected hierarchy get exported to USD. So we go back to create and now we have this little icon here, the, the one of the file, the anim file has that little ball, moving ball icon. Drag that into the layer tab or the layer uh, panel and uh, the animation will update and move the forklift to the first frame of the animation. So now you can add the timeline. We'll go to Window Animation Timeline to uh, add the timeline to the UI. And we can see the frames there along the bottom of the viewport, scrub through the animation. You can see the animation playing back in Create. Now we're going to borrow some of the dynamic uh, impulse creators from the, uh, the lessons that we had earlier in our demo pack. Remember these two cubes that were at the opposite end of the warehouse. And each of these tall cubes had uh, some dynamic animation on their linear velocity. Well, here I'm just clearing out that value on each of those, uh, those shapes. And then I'm going to duplicate this one here in the front and move it to the opposite end of the warehouse where the forklift is going to end its animation path uh, in front of the rack. So we're gonna place this, uh, this rectangular cube right there where the forklift is stopping its motion right at the rack. We could use the actual model of the forklift to create a collision object, but I'm going to cheat by using this bigger bigger cube here to amplify the effect. Now we can keyframe the animation of that velocity. So at that frame, at frame 119, we'll keyframe that linear velocity at zero by right clicking on it and saying set key. We'll move forward one frame and then change that value to let's say 700 and then right click set key there and now we'll move the key the, the timeline about 10 frames ahead at frame 130 we'll change it back to zero and keyframe there if you look at the curve of that motion through the curve editor window animation curve editor you can see there's three keyframes saved for that animation of that value I'm going to change the keys so that they're stepped animation turn off the cube so that it's not displayed during the final animation. Now, when I rewind, what we'll do is add about 70 frames of pad at the beginning of the animation so that the physics simulation can run up to the uh, frame zero of the timeline. And when we hit play, you can see the animation playing back, incorporating all of the elements that we've talked about. Animation curves coming from Maya, the dynamics that we've gotten created from the earlier examples in the demo pack and creating a really fun way of bringing all of these effects together using all of the Omniverse Create uh, connectors and all of the techniques that we've talked about uh, through all of these tutorials. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, take some time, add some cameras, have some fun, change dynamics, move the, the forklift around any way you like to play and create your own scene. Thanks for watching.